Sorry about that. Uh, we'll have an extension cord, and if my machine turns off, I'll literally just do it off the top of my head. Um, I, I've done this session before. So. Okay, <clears throat> so CNN.com, and we're going to look at an example of uh, some real good meta tags. So up here we see at the top of the uh, code of the page for homepage for CNN.com. Uh, yes, I, I can try that. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so uh, can everybody see that better? Okay, wonderful. So the meta tags are literally uh, like HTML tags or XML tags, even if you want to say that. Um, start with the word meta, and then they are defined by their name. So that here we have keywords, and here we have descriptions, and then they have the content. So the keywords we see are comma-separated keywords. Okay, there is a limit, and I'll share that limit uh, with keywords. It should be no more than 1,024 characters. Okay. And even then, they kind of recommend less because, I mean, that's, it, it can be quite a, a, a lot. But if you're like a, a, um, a news-based site or uh, you do a lot of topics, maybe you have like a web design blog and you do every single programming language known to man, um, that's a lot of keywords and, you know, um, you can end up filling that list. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be tweaking your keywords, uh, not daily, but imagine practically quarterly. You know, at, uh, at the earliest, thank you. At the earliest, it would be as monthly. 
Uh, why would you want to do that? Well, because you're, you should be using tools to understand your users and where they're coming from. And if you see that, if you uh, run a blog about graphic design color, thank you, um, and you spell color, C-O-L-O-R, well, you're speaking to a, a more North American or literally maybe just a U.S. crowd. They speak U.S. English. Uh, and in other areas, they spell color, C-O-L-O-U-R. Okay, so that could be literally a whole 170% traffic that you're missing out on, you know, from that one word not being there. So you can type all your articles with the US English color, and you can use meta tags to have the alternate spelling of color, or maybe even in other languages. Okay, so that's just a, a little tip. Uh, uh, 1024 characters, and that includes the commas and spaces. Okay. And unfortunately, uh, I've never been able to answer whether it's worth putting spaces or not between the commas. I, I can never tell if it really does anything. Um, and again, it, you know, mileage may vary on your own words. Um, you don't want to repeat words. So the recommendation usually is if you do uh, social, comma, community, comma, social community, that's supposedly a bad thing. So you would want to choose social, comma, community, or social community, you know, together. And it's really, you gotta play with it and just kind of uh, massage your keywords. A lot of this, you know, if you're new to the keyword game, um, it's gonna take time, okay? This is not something you can jump and look at stats for the next day and see how you're doing, okay? There are stats, yes, you can look and see how you're doing, but you're gonna drive yourself crazy going in increments of, you know, day-by-day -day stats, okay? Because it takes a long time. Google spy, <clears throat> old school, uh, um, remember the old web crawler in the, you know, the early days of cool World Wide Web? Okay, well, remember the icon was a little spider? So. The spider is actually what we call the little robots that run out and crawl through your website pages. Okay, um, sorry if you're arachnophobic, but um, basically they're going to crawl and update themselves. Well, those spiders might not come back for a month. You know, so you, you, I mean, if you're looking at stats every day and wondering why am I not getting anything, well, it's because you probably haven't been crawled yet. I mean, it's a crazy scenario one month now these days. Um, but if you have frequent content that you're uploading every day, the spiders start to know, hey, there's food content here every day. So they come back to get fed every day. Okay, and you can even, there's even ways in the meta tags, and you can look that up, um, it's public information, of how to even mark the frequency of your updated content. So, and then the, the spiders like that. They like a nice big sign that says when they come back for dinner. Okay. Uh, okay, so getting back to the meta tags, description tag, we see also follows, it has uh, the content attribute here, and this is actually a properly written, and I stress properly written, because it's not additional keyword dumps, okay? Properly written paragraph or sentence, that's it. The limit here, the limit here is documented uh, differently for many different search engines, but it's safe to say 250 characters would be the max you would ever have in description. And Google chops off at like 120, 160. Everybody get that? Okay, keep them short, keep them sweet. They show up, so let's look up for, uh, let's actually uh, use a search engine and let's look up CNN, right? Uh, is it case sensitive? I would say not anymore, if it ever was. And the reason why is because a lot of programmers, especially with keywords and search, it is very common practice to um, shrink all the text to lowercase, no matter what it is, and run searches and queries against that. Question. Question. Sorry. Um, now. That is, that, is, that is a faux pas, but um, I mean, there's CNN and they've got more money than me, so they, uh, they, they do whatever they want at that point. And there's CNN, I mean, it's not hard if you've heard of them. 
But let's look at their search results. I mean, they're number one on Google, and I'm not going to really use the other search engines, I'm sorry. Um, Google will be enough for today. Um, CNN comes up first. Cool, it is their website. And we see, uh, and I want everybody to know, there's these really neat kind of sublinks. You see that? Like a secondary set? We're going to see how to get that for our own websites today. So I'm going to show how to do that. Okay, you can't control that, but you can hint to Google what you would like to have show up there. Okay, and we'll see that. And it's not just Google, it's uh, you know other, other search engines like Ask, um, MSN, okay? They don't all appear like this, but the additional content for this website, little sidebar things for the website that come up in search results, all those fancy things, that's, that's where they kind of come from. And uh, just to tease you guys, that comes uh, from sitemaps. So we'll be seeing some of that right now. And then I mean in a little bit. Question, yes? So the question was if I've seen search bars up here uh, with the search results. Oh, I'll take a guess at what that is. So the question was, have I ever seen a little search uh, search input field additionally with someone's results? No, I have not yet. But I'm going to take a really wild guess that it's used, it's due to using open search, which uh, basically you see the for those who use Firefox, um, the search little cool Google search in the top right next to your address bar. Is everybody familiar with that? Is anybody not familiar with the search little mechanism in Firefox? Okay. These are using different protocols. Sherlock was the old one, and Open Search is the new protocol everyone uses. Is this a crazy language you have to code? No. No. You basically create an XML file that outlines and defines how you want people to be able to search remotely and then come to your website or get results back. This I would recommend, especially now that uh, uh, I'm assuming that this is open search for the usage of what she was mentioning, where there's a search field right for your website. Okay, It would make a lot of sense that it would be that protocol, and I'm assuming. But open search is like in Firefox. Essentially, it, and this is something actually I wasn't going to really uh, mention, but this is cool. If you have open search, implemented in your Drupal website or your regular website, what happens is other people can basically hook in and add your site to their list of search engines or places to search. And basically, you can end up interfacing and extending people's search software, whatever it be, a browser or something new and hip that we don't know yet. And open search is that, that foundation uh, technology that is going to really help us actually be able to search multiple other websites in one query. You know, open search to open search to open search and bring results back, you know, to maybe mega aggregators or something. Open search is one of those technologies that does that. So um, I got off on a little tangent there, but I think that's what it is. Um, if it's not, that's what I would code it if I was at Google. Oh, okay, let's do that quick test just so everybody can see that. Thank you very much. So, uh, Wikipedia who needs no introduction, yet we're going to search for it. Wow, there it is. Okay, does everybody see that? The search field that comes even within your results, and it even has the website, searchwikipedia.org. Okay, you can even, I'm assuming if Google's allowing this, with open search, you can actually hint at what text you probably want in that button right there. Pretty neat, huh? So like DrupalModules.com, they could have search for Drupal Modules on DrupalModules.com or something, okay? Now, get this, especially since companies are doing this now, you want to make sure your important words are involved with this type of search. You know, these are additional things that they would find. You know, people want to see, you want to gain trust from the users, okay? Because they can just jump to some other website, whether you're selling something or not, okay? So re, re orient, keeping the user oriented, it's not just a design feature, you know, for graphic design, but you hear people say it's for user experience, okay? Keep them oriented, you know? 
Yes, using words over and over again are not the greatest thing, but when they're used in the right context, in the right spots, then even if you're only coming up to the number six, you know, on uh, Google's home, um, first results page, I feel you're providing a better service. Okay, and in this day and age, when there's going to be more and more information, it's going to be overloaded, and there's tons of websites popping up for something. Just like us going out somewhere to eat, service is everything. When we call somewhere, customer service is everything. Okay. I'm sorry, I just want to get on the tension because I, I don't see any more good customer service like there should be in a lot of places. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay, so thank you for the Wikipedia search uh, um, uh, tip. I'll get to use this later. But uh, that is very cool. So I'm actually personally going to go now and start to make sure I'm including that in my websites. Okay, so uh, back to the source. So uh, that was really neat, but we're talking about meta tags, okay? So see, they don't have really a lot of meta tags. I mean, there's quite a few, but it doesn't go on and on and on and on, okay? Uh, yes, they say the word news a lot. Do they, really? Bre breaking news, US news, okay. News online, okay. Yeah, again, mileage will vary, and it takes a while to get your kind of trend reports back or see how you're doing. Um, Google and other companies, uh, um, basically like Yahoo who bought Overture, they have tools that let you query the large search engines and say, hey, how is this keyword doing right now? And then you search and it comes back and it says, well, this keyword by itself is this many searches per month. And they tell you when they did that analysis. And they show you alternates, you know what I mean? So I actually have a website uh, that I, let me see, uh, let me see, xtmd.us, yes. Okay, so I do Dreamweaver extensions in my spare time, and I have some Drupal ones. Uh, and let me see if I actually have my modules installed here. Okay, so I have some meta tags installed here, um, and it is a Drupal 5 website that I run that one on right now. All my new sites are six, I promise. Um, and I have a copyright meta with my name, okay? Since I am an author, my book is gonna probably get searched more, but because of my involvement with communities, my name actually gets searched. So not only do uh, I have all the software and the, the cool technologies that I work with as my keywords and in my description, but I use the copyright field so Google and other search engines can try to find my name that way as well. So I don't use up my name in the keywords. So there are many alternate, I guess I could say meta tags that you could use. These are really only three out of quite a bit. Yes? So yeah, Sam, uh, Sam kind of peeked us in on something I was going to reveal a little bit later. You start with meta tags, but you do not end with meta tags, okay? It, I mean, it really is just like the very first, not even scratch, it's kind of just put, you know, wiping your hand on the surface. But you've got to do it, okay? You should do it. So we're covering meta tags, how to get those in there. But content is key. So another thing that we're going to be going over is how to basically make sure your page content is properly more power, more weight. Okay, um, so let's, uh, let's get into that stuff a little bit more. So uh, I run a site, we saw CNN's meta tags, so that took a little bit. We have our new Drupal site. Remember those modules we needed to get? So let me go over the modules that you're gonna want, okay? The very first module that you're gonna definitely wanna get is the XML sitemaps module. Okay, let me go down to the bottom for that. Okay, XML sitemap, I'm sorry, it's singular. So let's go check this out. So it's a module that is ordained for Drupal 5 and is in development for Drupal 6. Okay. Hmm? It works great in 6, yes. I, as soon as this came out, I was so happy because uh, my six sites got their XML site map love. So um, there's, again, it's not fully released for 6, but you can download it, okay? And then it's definitely out for 5. And what you get here and what we'll install, because we're gonna download this, is you get an XML sitemap, 
And what is that? Well, let me go back to my ExtendS website and let me load up my sitemap.xml. Now, a sitemap is literally a big index XML file pointing to all the content that is in your site. So we don't basically have to depend on the spiders to crawl around page for page for page. This is a map of our whole website that we want them to care about. And they go, cool, thanks, and they go through the whole map. Here's a tidbit. If you're running a website that has more than 50,000 nodes of content, you can have more than one sitemap. You can break categories, sections up into multiple sitemaps. You can have a sitemap index of sitemap indexes of sitemaps. Okay, so you can get deep, but it limits at 50,000 um, lines, essentially. Okay, so um, items, lines, however you kind of want to take it. But if, you, if you're reaching 50,000, you have to break it up. And uh, if, you know, um, if you're a person with that much content, then you're definitely going to want to read all you can on sitemaps. Okay? For the hardcore geeks, you can gun zip, okay, G zip, uh, an index file and actually bring it down to a 10 megabyte limit. Again, it's 50,000 uh, 50, rows or 10 megabytes. Okay? So you can gun zip a sitemap down to 10 megabytes if it's massive for some reason with a lot of text, because it might be 50,000 rows, but it might have long, long strings. Okay? So there's a size limit too. So you can kind of compress those files and reference them that way. Okay, so this sitemap is actually just XML, but Firefox reads it a little bit pretty. So let me blow this up for everybody here. So we see that basically there's a bunch of repeating URL nodes, elements, okay? Location, what's the URL? How frequent is it changed and what's its priority? Remember the little blocks? Let's go back to look for uh, CNN. Okay, remember these little sublinks right here? Well, you can affect those and hint at them by sh marking certain ones a top priority. So you want to do these with top level navigation, top level sections, important things, okay? So like Drupal would do this for their download page. It would be a top priority, okay? Then you can go into lower priorities. It goes from zero to 1.0, okay? In decimal form, okay? Dot one, dot two, dot three. So it's that kind of a weight system. They're not sorted in that order, okay? So we see some here are point, 0 0.8, okay? When it was last modified even, okay? That sitemap updates, so when that page updates, this date will update itself and the spider goes, oh, that's, that's gotta change, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get the updated content. Can you quickly clarify the, the hierarchy, the, the, the range of priority? Uh, yeah, thank you, I, I apologize for not doing that uh, in the beginning. Priority 1.0 is the top, okay? Zero, it does not even really get indexed. So the minimum really is 0 0.1 at the bottom. Okay, all right. So I have the module, let's get this in there. Quick. Okay, so I'm gonna install this module. We're dragging it into my module folder. We go to our Drupal SEO. We're going to go to our module list real fast and activate this module. Okay, that page is just done for. No, every website. If you build any website, even if it's a personal blog, put a sitemap up. Put meta tags up. Okay, meta tag sitemap. Those are your first two, literally swashbuckling stabs at you know all search engines to help them out. A lot of search engines use the sitemaps. Ask.com, Yahoo, MSN. Um, I, I really can't name them all right now. Okay, so we see in the modules list uh, a group for the XML sitemap. Everybody see that? Do we need to blow this up? Okay, I'll do that for everybody. So we're gonna turn on XML sitemap. Uh, the engines, what is this? Well, 
this module can even go let the search engines know, like, hey, we have a sitemap updated, or we have a sitemap, basically ping them, essentially. Um, so you want to do that, and anything that is specific for Yahoo, it would probably come up in this uh, module right here. Okay, stuff like that. Now, you have to turn on this module if you want nodes to be available in a sitemap, even your custom nodes, okay? If you want taxonomy terms, you're gonna turn on the term SEO module, and if you run a big social network and you want people to be able to search for users, like if you run MySpace-ish type sites with bands, and you want the band names to be searched and their users, and that's how you do it, then you're gonna to wanna to turn this on. A lot of sites I work with though, we don't have that on. But users might be a top priority page, right? If you're a social network, right? Members, something like that, okay? So uh, we're gonna let Drupal do its thing while it's saving here. Now I need to get, because we don't have a, total, a lot amount of time, I wanna show you guys the other modules so you guys know what to walk away with. Um, there is one called uh, Meta Tags, as funny and as simple as it's named, but it wasn't called Meta Tags before. Oh, come on. It was actually called Node Words. So it's known Meta Tags, AKA Node Words, okay? So let me, sorry, my Firefox is slowing up on me. Uh, and we're, we're probably going to go um, right up into 12.30, if not maybe like a couple minutes over. I want to give a couple minutes for questions, but I'm available all day, so you guys can go ahead and hit me up. Additionally, we have Birds of a Feather sessions. So you can uh, hit up uh, other Drupal members and say like, hey, you know, I was wondering about this SEO idea, your module, but I'm showing you the modules now. There's just something you need to get clarified. Other people can help. Yes, okay, so while this is like loading and taking forever in a day, I'm sorry, I'm in Firefox. Um, <clears throat> so basically, if you run a website that talks about video games, you actually will want to definitely make sure the video game meta tag keywords and description has the important things that you care about. You know, if they're old school, Super NES, uh, that's what you put in there. But your content has to have those words in there more than your meta tags have, okay? and don't sprinkle it like crazy, it's gotta be real content. And there's natural language algorithms built into these top search engines that look at key words and sentences entirely before and after, and check and see if, they're, if you're spamming or not. You know, it will realize, you know, the, if it's flowing correctly in the, in the language. These companies have billions and billions and billions of dollars thrown at this. This is their, this is their business. Okay, so they don't want to be you know, duped by somebody who puts a bunch of keywords in a lot of pages that do nothing. Okay? And actually you get essentially blacklisted and you get bad, negative, what's known as karma on the internet. And it's not just like, ooh, karma in the world, no. It's, they call it karma, okay? You know, uh, and that affects your page rank. Okay? If some other site has a high page rank, you want to get in their good graces and have them link to your website, okay? If you want to have links to websites but you don't want to give them karma, there's a no, uh, um, uh, a no follow uh, attribute that you would put on links that you don't care for the spiders to actually jump and follow and care about. And they'll basically say, oh, that's just text. You know, essentially, and just skip over that link, okay? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know why my Firefox is not responding. So, actually, let me, uh, let me quit my Firefox. So, um, now, in pages with content, we have uh, HTML tags, as everybody's aware of. You know, there's the div tags, there's the p tag, um, and there's the heading tags. Who here does not use H1, H2, H3, H4 tags? Everybody in this room uses heading tags. That's fine, that's fair. Okay, okay, a couple people. You have to start using heading tags in your content. That's how you wanna break up your content. And they go, of course, H1 is the biggest, baddest, top, and then they go down a number, all the way down to six. But H's one through four are your most important, really, for content. So your keywords should be in those headings. So that's why the two gentlemen here near the front both were stating that your content, your pages are important. So headings, proper semantics, keywords in the content, okay? 
Title of the tribute? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me let me see if I can get something out of my browser. Hey, Chris. Done? Wrap. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. All right, I'm gonna, sorry, I really apologize. My, my machine here is actually really, really slow for some reason. The fire, okay, wow. No, that's not what I want. Okay, that's not what I want either. Show me. Okay, so uh, we're gonna look for a heading tag in here. So heading three here is releases, the word releases. Okay, let's see if we can find an H1 in here. Okay, H1, XML sitemap, okay? So the module name on its page, it's in both the title, you see that, right? And then it's also in the H1, but you definitely, and they don't do this on Drupal.org, but you see this download link right here? Well, let's look at its code. Oh, great, uh, find download, okay. You see this link here that lets us download the file? It only has an href attribute to point directly to the file to download. In my opinion, that's not enough because you could do more. And how could you do, do more? You add title attributes. And I'll do it right now, I can't do it right there. There's a title attribute that you can add that basically um, it provides um, people with a tooltip when they hover over the link. Okay, so the tooltip is a usability enhancement, and I would personally say, and, uh, even though it just says the word download here, I would say download XML sitemap module version and then this, because if your code can generate that automatically and build that title attribute, well right there is keywords, module, XML, sitemap, okay? So you're, you're injecting some more keywords in like that. So use the title of the tree. Okay, uh, unfortunately again, like my machine is really acting super slow and it should have saved the module configuration. I really don't want this to crash on me. So, okay, um, so meta tags, which is also known as no words. Let me see. Yes, I will. I'm looking for this module that I just found for you guys. Okay. Oh, shit. Come on. Sorry, my Firefox is dog slow right now. I'm not enjoying it. Okay. Okay. Meta tags module is also for six and five. And this allows you to, of course, do the description and keyword meta tags for your whole site globally and for each type of type. So if you have blog, page, story, book, okay? You get to choose different meta tags and you even come up with, you can even add default meta tags. So if you want to make sure every book page has the word book as a keyword for some reason, or hand page or handbook, you can pre-populate the settings to have that. And even if somebody's adding other keywords, it's gonna prepend the defaults for that note type. Um, so I have to pretty much uh, stop. Um, I'll have uh, I'll give you time for two questions. References or more SEO? More SEO references? Let me see if I have something on here. Um, uh, the Google Webmaster. Um, Google.com slash webmaster is going to be all the tools that you're going to want to check out to deal with Google. And if you satisfy the Google monster, the others will be fine. That's my opinion. Okay? So there's many tools. Second question. Um, unfortunately, I would say no, you just gotta kinda hand code it in. But if you have a WYSIWYG HTML thing, then I would hope that that would have something for the title of tribute. I'll take one last question over here. Uh, I, I'm on the website, uh, SEO 